welcome. I hope you're ready to get into your B-I-B-L-E. That means the Bible. Come on. The B-I-B-L-E, that's the, I stand upon the, oh, we went old school right there. Hey, I want to go ahead and pray, and we're going to have some fun this morning, okay? So let me go ahead and pray. I want you to do this. If you would just put your hand on your heart. Heavenly Father, we come to you today, and Lord, we want to open our hearts to you. Father, every heart that is beating in this place, Lord, would you fill it with faith today? Would you fill it with love today? Would you fill it with hope today? Lord, may our hearts beat strong because your word we have hidden in our hearts today. So Father, we receive that in the strong name of Jesus. And someone said, Amen. All right. Well, hey, we're going to continue this series called All In. Everybody say, All In. Okay, you're with me. And we're going to be jumping in to 1 Samuel chapter 17. And how many of you heard the story about David and Goliath before? How about our kids? Our kids have heard that story. And uh, if you are not familiar with it, most, most people are, because even if you like watch sports, you may have heard of this uh, comparison before. David is an underdog, and he, and he beats the giant, and sometimes that's referred to in sports as kind of the, the underdog and beating the, beating the, the overrated team. And uh, we're going to look at this story. It's a true story. And what we're doing over these next few weeks is we're looking at the journey here of this guy named David. Last week we talked about his coming out party, that he found out what his destiny and identity in God was. That it's this coming out party and we see this whole journey and uh, element, this war take place to where he defeats Goliath. And here is something that we see in David the whole way through. Is David has an all-in type of faith. Now what does that look like? It's simply this, and it's in your notes, you can follow along with your notes today. Uh, Maybe you have a paper or on your app. But it's possessing a faith that fights to the finish. It's not faith for temporary. It's not faith just here and there and sometimes or if I open my Bible. It's this faith that I'm believing and trusting in God for the rest of my life. Everybody say the rest of my life. For all of it. That everything, when I have issues come, when I have problems that come my way, for the rest of my life I have faith that's going to fight to the finish. And so we talked about that last week and being able to understand you have an identity in Christ, in God, and he has a plan for you. And today, we're taking it from a different angle and looking at it that, you know, David was part of the Israelite army, and there was a time to now the Israelite army was coming against the Philistine army, and as they were coming together, there were some things that took place in this valley that we're going to learn from the, the nation of Israel how to and how not to Go into these times when you have spiritual battles and what it requires. Now, when we uh, first came into this building, uh, it had a totally different look. And uh, we came in and there was a lot of painting that was done and a lot of work here and there that was done. And we had to go pretty high sometimes and reach some areas that were really high to where a ladder couldn't reach it. So uh, we had to go and order a, a scissor lift to come out. How many of you know what a scissor lift is? And it, it just goes straight up, and it has a platform up to the ceiling. And, uh, you know, this one went up to 18 feet. And, and, you know, that came in and got there, and some of the guys were looking at it and getting in it. And I was like, oh, no, you go ahead, you know. I, I, I'll leave that to you guys, you, you know. Because when it comes to, like, uh, heavy equipment or dangerous equipment, I, I just get a, a little timid. So I'm usually passing it off to somebody else because it was dangerous for me, and and there came a point, though, after they had been using it, that I got to a place in my project that I needed to use it, and I was kind of shaken, because if you've ever been on one of these lifts before, you've seen them, it's not like the controls are like real smooth in your car, okay? You just come to a nice, complete stop. It's like when you stop, boom, you stop, and the whole thing shakes with you. And if you're up a little higher, and it's, it's moving, it's swaying, and so this is not the type of equipment that I'm confident in, but I had to decide... If I wanted to get the job completed, was I going to go ahead and just take a stand and man up and get up on that platform and raise that thing up and work it or not? And I could have done a couple things. I could have said, hey guys, I'm, 
feeling sick today, I'm going to have to bow out, okay? I can, you, you guys go ahead. I could have I ran and hid somewhere, or I just made the decision of, all right, I'm going to get up on this lift, I'm going to take a stand, and I'm going to go to work, and I'm going to figure it out. And that's all you can do, and that's all that I had the choice to make was, I've just got to figure out, I've just got to make a stand. And I want us in our faith and going in this series, I want us to be in a place to where, man, I'm willing to take a stand and be all in for God completely. There's this acrostic that's called YOLO. Everyone say YOLO. You only live once. Hear my heart today. I want you to live a faith that is like, you only live once, so why not live it all in for Jesus? Why not live it all in? Why go halfway? You only live once and the clock is ticking. So why not say, God, I'm giving you everything. I'm going to have a faith that doesn't just fight now, but all the way to the finish. God, I am in this with you. And that is my heart for you, that you would be all in, that we would be a church that is all in because I want you to experience the security of God, the sovereignty of God, the provision of God, the freedom of God. I want you to have these things. And when you're all in, that's when you find them. Can I get an amen? That's when we find it, and so I want you to have that. Even when you're going through tough times, you can still have those things and see those things happening in your relationship with God. And so we're going to look at this battle today, how it's beginning to start, and they're squaring up against each other. And you see the Philistines, it's like, why are these guys at war? Why are these guys fighting? It's because the Philistines were always trying to take advantage of and advance against the Israelites. And the Israelites, if they didn't do something, then they were just going to get overwhelmed and they were going to get whooped and that was it. And they had to make a decision. Are they going to stand or not? I want you to hear this. This is kind of the first thing. This is for free, okay? This is for free. That the enemy will take as much of God's greatness as you allow. The enemy will take as much as God's greatness in your life and God's plan and God's future for you as you allow and you make a decision if you say I'm not running or going anywhere I'm going to be all in with God and believe and trust in what God's going to do can I get an amen so we're going to go ahead and look at the uh here in the first uh in in first Samuel chapter 17 and you can follow along on the screen if you'd like or you can read along in your bible or mobile device or undercover Christian device whatever you want to do it says this, now the Philistines gathered their armies for battle, and they were gathered at Soko, everyone say Soko, all right, there was Soko which belongs, or I'm sorry, uh, Soko which belongs to Judah, and encamped between Soko and Azekah in Ephes Damim, and Saul and the men of Israel, this is a side that David was on, Saul and the men of Israel were gathered and encamped in the valley of Elah. And drew up in line, uh, in line of battle against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on, one, uh, on the mountain on the one side, and Israel stood on the mountain on the other side, with a valley between them. And there came out from the camp of the Philistines a, a champion named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. That equals to about nine feet, nine inches. He was almost ten feet tall. That's a uh, regulation size basketball hoop in the NBA, okay? And it says this. He had a helmet of bronze on his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of bronze. That's about 125 pounds. That was a, you, you talk about having a he heavy coat on. Brother was carrying or wearing a heavy coat. And he had, a bronze armor, had bronze armor on his legs and a javelin of bronze slung between his shoulders. The shaft of his spear was like a weaver's beam and his spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron, which is about 15 pounds alone by itself. And a shield bearer went before him. He stood and shouted in the ranks of Israel, why have you come out to draw up for battle? Am I not a Philistine? And are you not servants of Saul? Choose a man for yourselves and let him come down to me. If he is able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. And the Philistine said, I defy the ranks of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. 
When Saul and all Israel heard this, heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. They were dismayed by what was happening in the valley that was about to take place between uh, the Philistine army and the Israelite army. And I want you to see this. There was something great that was about to happen, even though the Israelites did not see it. And I want you to hear this today. This is what I'm going to preach on. The V is in the valley. Everybody say the V. Come on, the V is in the valley. The victory is in the valley. And too many times people have told us or led us to believe that if you're living a good Christian life, you're on a mountaintop. But the victory is not on the mountaintop. The victory comes in the valley. The victory comes in the valley. So many times we're running scared. We're avoiding. We're trying to get around things. We're trying to get out of the valley and jump up to the mountaintop. But victory takes place in the valley some of us here are wondering god why is things why are things going wrong why am i hitting a wall why does it feel like things are falling apart i want you to know it is a setup god has put you in the valley because he wants to bring victory into your life we don't need to be afraid of it there is victory in the valley the v is in the valley now here's the thing with the valley is sometimes we don't have a choice, just life moves us into the valley. That's just what life does. Then there are other, other times where we move ourselves into the valley because that's just how you are. Uh, me too, me too, okay. That, that's just how we are. And there are some times where God puts us into the valley because he knows what he wants to do in your life next and he's got victory planned for you. And he's even got victory planned for the things you mess up and you do wrong and you don't get right. But the only way for us to experience a victory in the valley, the things and the troubles that we go through, is we have to learn how to stand firm in our faith. How to take a stand. The Israelites, they weren't taking that stand. Goliath made it very clear. Here I am, make my day. Who wants to take me on? He stood firm in what he believed and who he was. And if you want to have victory in the valley where you think that's where everything goes wrong, I want you to take a stand firm in your faith. Who are you going to believe? Are you going to, repeat, are you going to believe the report of the Lord? Or are you going to believe what everybody else is saying? We have to stand firm in the faith. Isaiah 7, 9, it says this. It helps us. It's just kind of like a line that we cross. If you do not stand firm in your faith, you will not stand at all. If you do not stand firm in your faith, have all in type of faith, you're not going to have a faith that finishes. But it's when we say, I'm taking a stand in my faith so I can follow and go where God wants me to go. That's the type of faith that's all in that gets us somewhere. Now there's a saying that goes like this, and maybe you can wrap your mind around this. That if you don't stand for something, you're going to fall for anything. If you don't stand for something, you're going to fall for anything. Now check this out. If you do not stand in your faith and believing and trusting God and walking with God, hear me now, you're going to fall for anything. You're going to fall for trends. You're going to fall for other opinions. You're going to follow maybe other religions. You're going to fall to the voices of other people or what culture says. You know what many of us fall to? We fall to fear. We fall for the, the things inside of us. But if you would just stand firm and make a decision, I am standing and I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to have a, fight that, a faith that fights until the finish. Then maybe we might see God do something extraordinary with our lives. But it comes to us taking a stand and the question for you today is where in your life do you need to take a stand in your faith where, where in your life might you say this has gone on long enough where in your life might you say I haven't been able to get through this anymore but today I'm going to take a stand I'm, I'm tired of falling for everything this is where we need this all-in type of faith. 
and we have this faith because these are the things that are going to happen and where we need this all-in type of faith. That God may lead you sometimes. God just does crazy things sometimes. He'll want us to take a job that pays less because he's got a mission for us there than a job that pays more that just leads to nowhere. That sometimes we're going to need this all-in type of faith when we're supposed to forgive someone that we think does not deserve forgiveness. Oh, I'm preaching to somebody, okay. Um, we're going to need this all-in type of faith when we just have to humble ourselves and submit to authority. We are going to have to sometimes need this all-in type of faith to tithe and give like 10% to God. Are you kidding me? We're going to have to have this type of faith that where we just, we're willing to just confess what's going on and be able to trust God with our lives in every area. We have to look at those things. Where do I need to trust God to where I can find God working in my life? Because we're going to have to stand firm. We're going to have to make a decision. Young people, you're going to have to make a decision for the rest of your life. Are you going to stand firm in the faith or are you going to fall to everything else and be like everybody else? Those of us who, who are older and married, and, and I don't know why I included myself in older. That wasn't good. Anyway, those um, um, ad, ad, advanced and experienced in life, hey, you know what? Are we still going to, do we still, are we still in the game? Are we still in the game that it's not talk and a rhythm or a ritual? Man, that I am standing firm because I'm not satisfied and I know the V is in the valley and I don't plan on staying here long and I know God will bring victory. Are you going to stand firm for that? Are we going to do that? Today I want to just talk about some things that we'll find in the valley. You can have the V in the valley, the victory in the valley. If you look at these things, you can gain, but you have to know what's happening in the valley. And I want you to be strengthened today. I want you to be encouraged today. I want you to walk out of here looking at the things that are around that have been there and been hanging out. I want you to just push them aside and say, no longer, I'm all in. I'm standing here in faith. We read a lot of different things there in, that, in those series of scriptures. But one thing we have to make no doubt about it is this, is that the enemy doesn't stand a chance. Come on now. The enemy doesn't stand a chance. The enemy just comes into our lives and we just get crippled. But I want you to see something here. This is how God has positioned the, positioned the enemy. Here's the, the Philistine army. And just like the, the Israelites had the Philistine army as an enemy, we have the enemy of our souls, the devil, who wants to just destroy and wreck our faith. Here is the Philistine army, and this is where they were positioned. A few di different neighborhoods. One was Soko which means like fenced in or shut in. Azica meant like dug down. And then you had Ephes Demim, which meant this, the boundary of blood drops or death. God already set them up to die and to lose. He already had them positioned there. But we don't see the position of the enemy. We see our position. If you look at the back of the book, the end of the book in Revelation, it all ends with amen, so be it. God won, God is done. But we have these types of mentalities sometimes that I don't know how this is going to happen. We don't fight from this place of victory with God. We're already like, I think, I think this is over. Go ahead and sell everything. I think we're, we're done. But what if we had a different attitude? What if we have the type of attitude to where, no, Jesus already def defeated this. Jesus already won. What if we said that over our job and our finances? No, Jesus has already won. What if we said this over our marriage? No, 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 Jesus has already won. What if we said it over that prodigal son? No, no, Jesus has already won. What if we set it over our city? Jesus has already won. What if we set it over the racial tension? Jesus has already won. What if we set it over every person and every job and every place that we go? Jesus has already won. The enemy is defeated. Because he is. God's already set him up. The, the enemy doesn't stand a chance. And that's where they're positioned. But then it says that the Israelites were positioned in the valley of Elah which that's referring to a terebinth tree, and it means a strong tree. Here are the Israelites. God positioned them in a strong place. God positioned them in a place to where they were going to be victorious, and if they would only stand firm like a strong tree in the valley where there was going to be victory, 
that they would see the hand of God move and God do a great thing in their lives and for their army and for their nation. And maybe if we just have the mentality of the enemy doesn't stand a chance right now, I'm taking, I'm taking a stand in the valley, maybe we see a different outcome than we've seen before in the past. And so the enemy doesn't stand a chance, and the next thing is this, is that intimidation is the enemy's only stand. That's the only thing that the enemy has to stand on is intimidation. So you, you know like Rocky Three, right? How many of you have seen Rocky Three? Even some of you need to like bless your kids and show them Rocky Three. okay? You need to send them back old school. And um, I, I remember seeing that. And you remember Clubber Lang and how they, you know, come out, and Mr. T, and, uh, you know, they come out in the ring, and they're like, in this corner weighing one million pounds and, you know, and slaying dragons and everything else. They, they have them come out. Well, I remember when, you all remember Thunderlips? Come on, you remember Thunderlips who came out, and, and he came there, and it was like, boom, and it was, it was thunderous. And here they started talking about his weight and his size, and it brought intimidation into the room. That's what happened in this scripture here. It says, the champion Goliath, here he was, undefeated, weighing in at, he is almost 10 feet tall, and intimidation can set in if we're not careful. That we can get intimidated by the things that we see around us, and so it causes us not to stay firm in our faith, but we step back. By the way, you can't just partially stand in your faith. You can't just stand in faith when mom and dad are around. You can't just stand in faith when, oh, I went to church this Sunday and then I'm standing. No, standing in faith is, it's going to fight until the finish. This is permanent. But if we give in a temptation, that's where we step back. And, you know, something that's pretty intimidating and people get intimidated by this right away. And you'll see, this is like spiritual battle right here. And I really believe this is when we come to the Lord and we start serving the Lord and we hear about this whole tithing thing, giving 10%. People get mad and angry, spit on the way up, you know, whatever. But, but, but this is intimidating. You want to know why? Because we have so much placed in it and our lives are, are so consumed with it and it, uh, it brings security in our lives and provision, right? Um, the house you live in was dictated by the amount of money you have. The job that you took you took that job according to how much you were going to get paid. You drive a, a car according to what you can afford, or maybe what you can't afford, but you went a little further. It dictates so much, it dictates what clothes you wear and, and where your kids go to school. And it dictates uh, if you were able to make it today and put gas in the tank. And so when, when we talk about something like trusting God with finances, 10% giving that away, that's intimidating. But I'm going to tell you something. Check this out. The V is in the valley. The V is in the hard places. That's where we find victory in our faith and we see God taking us up to the mountaintops and we see victory. And if we can do it in an area like that, maybe when I'm enduring hardships, I have a greater faith. Maybe when there's sickness, I have a greater faith that I'm standing firm in. Maybe when I don't know where to go and I've seen confused in my life and maybe there's racial tension, I can stand firm in my faith because if he's providing here, maybe he will provide there. We can't allow intimidation to set in because that's the enemy's only tactic. Because remember, what the enemy has already lost and there's no chance that he can stand against us. You're either going to stand for something or you're going to fall for anything. Why not take that stand? Be all in with your life and find victory. So he goes on, and he's in, they're in, he's in, it's intimidating what's happening. And then it gets to a place to where he's like, hey, you need to choose. Who's coming out? Who's coming out here right now? It's going to take me on. Indecision will forfeit the stand. Indecision will forfeit the stand. The Philistines had already decided who's going to take on this battle. And so when, when, the, when the enemy, when, when they sent out, when the Philistines, Philistines sent out Goliath, that's why he was able to come out and, and impose himself. Why he was able to take a stand and be so bold and dispose and push them around. They had already decided. And when we don't decide what we're going to do if we're going to stand firm in the faith, we begin to fall, we begin to slip, and check this out, 
I want you to see this. The enemy begins to take up more room in your life. And you realize this. My faith has failed and has not stayed consistent. And I want you to know that that's where it's important for us to be all in every part of us, all the areas of our life that we just need to be decided on. This is what I'm gonna, this is where I'm going to go and this is what I'm going to do in following the Lord. Indecision will forfeit the stand. We have to be decided. The next one, here is, here's what's happening now is that uh, he's come and he's, he's given the charge and he's given the conditions. This is how it's going to roll. That if I win, you're our servants. And if you win, we'll be your servants. But Goliath was so bold and so cocky and arrogant that he was just convinced that we're going to win and you're going to lose and you're going to be servants. And you know the other thing? Is that the Israelites had already kind of bought into, yeah, we're going to be servants here. We've got to think about how we're going to go about this. And what happens is, is that you become servant to what you won't stand up to. F follow me. Some of you, this is, I think there's going to be something that clicks in us, in our hearts and in our lives. You become servant to whatever you won't stand up to. They may have, they may, um, have won and they're not going to be servants, but as long as Goliath was calling them out and they were living in fear, they were already servant to the Philistines. They were already servant to that thing. And here's what happens. In life, when we're not standing in faith and we're not moving through things and getting healing and confronting issues, we have these issues in our lives. Come on, follow me. You, you, you can read into this. You see this. And there are things that are going on in our lives that we just dance around. And, and, and we won't walk through this thing, so it dictates where we work. It dictates maybe how we raise our kids. It dictates money. It dictates our marriage. It, it dictates our, our willingness to follow God. It, this thing right here dictates because we're not willing to confront it. We don't see how we can conquer. How God wants to remove this thing from our lives. But as long as we don't deal with this we are serving this. And if you don't take a stand, you are servant to whatever is there. About three years ago, uh, there was a situation that occurred and me and another pastor somehow, we got kind of entangled in it. And it left things kind of awkward. And how many of you know what I'm talking about? Awkward, you walk into a room and it's like something's going on here and doesn't feel right. Well, after this whole thing had gone down, we ended up in an event uh, not together, but we were in the same room together, and there was this event, and I remember walking in, and I'm like, oh, wow, and you know, there's part of you right now that just wants to say, hey, Lori, let's go, we're out, right, or you're just like, don't look, don't look, <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna sit this way, we're not, we're not looking that way, okay, and they're probably doing the same thing, and the thing is, as long as we let that happen, we were serving the conflict, we were, we were servants. We were slaves to this. And at some point, we had to decide, are we going to let this ruin the event or are we going to do something about it? And so I made a decision. I'm walking right up. I'm going to say, how you doing? And say hello. And we did that and we started chatting it up. And this was squashed. The enemy was defeated. Because we were not going to allow this to ruin this event and our relationship. I want you to see this. You cannot conquer what you will not confront. You cannot conquer what you will not confront. As a matter of fact, if you don't confront it, you are being conquered because you're a servant to it. I want you to follow me because I think some of you, this could be a breakthrough victory moment in your valley. Is what is in this place that you say, I need to confront and stand firm in the faith and say, God, this is yours now. And what's happening usually is there's underlying issues like our insecurities. Maybe we were betrayed at one point. Maybe we have some real deep hurts that we have never dealt with. Maybe our natural response is anger and rage, or we have that underneath and it's boiling and there's something there. Maybe there's some offense or whatever it is. Hey, today, if that's your valley, how about we release that to God and say, no more, I'm going to be set free from this. 
I'm in the valley, but I know there's victory in the valley. So I'm standing firm and knowing, God, this is yours from now on. I am not carrying this anymore. Because if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. Are you with me? And so let's not be servant to that anymore. Let's take a stand and let's not let the enemy defeat us. And then what we find is this. This is really what it boils down to when, you know, here is Goliath. He's calling him out. Choose this day who you're going to have. I'm about to whoop some of you, and they're already getting afraid, dismayed, discouraged. As a matter of fact, that's what happens when we don't stand up to something and don't confront it. The doubts and the discouragement and things happen. But now they're, it comes out and it says, he says this, I defy the armies and the ranks. I defy them. He is putting them down. What he's doing is he is challenging them, but not only that, he's combating it. It can cause you not to stand. And those who fail to stand believe the lies. Those who fail to stand believe the lies. Goliath comes out, I'm combating. You know what? The Israel people, they were God's children. They were God's truth. They had God's hand on their lives. And he wanted to come and say, I'm combating all of that. You are losers. You are going to be servants to us. And they got shook. And they got afraid. You can't believe the lies of the enemy. When you're going into the valley and you're going to have faith and things are going to come against you, the enemy's going to do this. I want you to see the lies. You've probably heard them before. You know what, if you're a real Christian, you'd be living on the mountaintop. You haven't been a Christian long enough, that's why you're in valleys. You know what, you're such a screw up, you're never getting out of the valley and God's had it with you and he's going to leave you there. Follow me. The V is in the valley. The victory is in the valley. It's not on the mountaintops. That's where we celebrate. The victory happens in the fight, the spiritual battle. When we're in the valley, I know, God, I don't know why I'm here. God, I don't know what's happening, but I'm going to stay consistent. I'm going to be all in. And I know the mountaintop moment is coming, but today I want victory. Today I'm standing on truth. And this is where, this is where it gets real. It's where we begin to say, I'm not going to stand on the lies and believe the lies anymore. I'm going to listen to truth because that's the B-I-B-L-E. It is the truth. Listen to this. This is where it gets real. When you're in the valley and truth, the Bible says this, to bless those who curse you. Not curse those who curse you. Because that's the world we live in, right? That's, that's in our minds, in this culture today, you don't get mad, you get, you get even. But no, he says, no, the true way, God's way, the, the way that, that finishes, that's victorious, is the one that blesses those who curse. And another one, this is, this is crazy and radical, love your enemies. Stand in it. If you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. You'll fall for anything. Stand firm in the faith or you're not going to stand at all. We have to stand in this. This is where we find victory by believing the truth of God. The V is in the valley. So here they were. They're in the valley of Elah. This was going to be the place, we're going to read it in the next few weeks, where David defeats the giant. Little schoolboy, little teenager. David defeats Goliath, and it's in this valley. Remember the valley? It's known as um, the, the tree valley. It's where the terebinth is there. It's known as being a strong tree. Not only a strong tree, but because it's so strong, it's known as like a divine, like also known as divine tree. Here they were in the valley, a divine place. See, when we are in the valley of life, when we're in the valley of pain, we're in the valley of sorrow, we're in the valley of sin and guilt, we're in the the valley of despair, we're in the valley of giving up, we're in the valley of illness and sickness, we're in the valley of hate. What we do is we have to understand that though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, 
you are with me. And there is a tree that is cursed. But when Jesus got on the tree, he made that tree divine to where I take all of this baggage I've been carrying in the valley and I set it at the foot of the cross. And those who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You are delivered. So when you're in the valley, the bee is in the valley. That's where you find victory. That's the strong place God is there with you. Well, I got on that lift, got the courage, got set, cracked my head a little bit. I was ready. And I went up and I got on that lift. I was moving around, scissor lift and all. I was up in high places. Then it came to a point to where it wasn't high enough. And we needed a higher lift, not just up to 18 feet, but we needed to be able to reach like 30 feet. And so we went ahead and we ordered that lift to come out and we did, and it was a boom lift. So, you know, it's got like elbows, you know, going all over the place. And I remember I had a little more confidence. So I seen this lift out in the parking lot where they dropped it and I went out there and I just kind of tinkered around a little bit, turned on, make sure I got all the knobs set and ready. And I jumped in that thing this isn't a racetrack around this building, but I kind of turned it into one. I was, I had that thing in gear. I was bouncing along, had bigger tires. I'm floating around. I come around, I bring it through those double doors, had it all set and ready to go. You want to know why? I took a stand. I took a stand and I had victory in one level. And when you take a stand in one level and you have victory, then another level comes and you stand in that and you find yourself at the mountain top. If you stand for something, the V, the V is in the valley. Don't get upset at the valley or run from it. Stay in and find victory. Here's what we need to have if we're going to get through the victory. We're going to get through this and be victorious. The scripture said it, sets it up in Ephesians. It says this, be prepared. Everyone say, be prepared. It means in Hebrew, that means be prepared. Be ready. The enemy's going to pull the intimidation trick. He's going to make it seem like he's already won when he doesn't stand a chance. The enemy, you need to be prepared and remember that he's going to sow lies in your mind, but you're choosing to believe truth. You have to be reminded and be prepared that I've already made the decision. I'm taking the stand because if I stand for something, then I won't fall for anything. We're making a decision. We are not going to forfeit anything. Be prepared. This is why. You're up against far more than you can handle on your own. Take all the help you can get. Every weapon God has issued so you'll still be on your feet. It's going to be far more than you can handle. But God's given you everything you need to find the V in the bow. Would you stand with me today? I think it's fitting we take a stand. And I just want you to envision the victory in the areas that you're just challenged. And the question is this. Where do you need to take a stand in your faith right now? Right away, it comes to mind. I got to take a stand right here. Maybe it's, maybe it's changing the circles you're running in. Maybe it's changing the way you talk or the, or the counsel you're getting or where you're looking for, for help in or I don't know what it is. Where do you need to take a stand? Maybe it's, maybe it's your character and your purity. Or wh Where is it that you need to take a stand? Let's be prepared. Let's make the decision, all right? Here's what I want you to do. Is you would, if you wouldn't just a posture of victory today because we're fighting from a place of victory. Would you just raise your hands? That's what Rocky would do when he'd win, right? Hands are in the air. We're just lifting it up today. Father, I just declare victory over your people. Because, Father, we are choosing to take a stand, and we know that the victory is in the valley. We are no longer running from it. We're no longer questioning who you are or who we are. But, Father, we are standing in it today. Lord, no matter what, what dilemma or what problem, what task, what mountain there may be, Lord, we declare victory in the name of Jesus. We take a stand today, God. Lord, on the rock, on the word of the Lord, we believe the truth and not lies today. Lord, we see the victory coming. We see it coming. Church, I want you to see it coming. As we go into the song, I want you to take a stand. 
firm in the faith and say, I see the victory coming in the valley. That's where he is. Come on. I'm going to see yes. victory for the on my heart, all right? I just, if you close your eyes for a minute, I really believe this, and I don't know how many are in here, but some of you may think that you've already lost, and the battle's over. You feel like you lost, and you don't think there's a chance that you can get out of this. You're in a hole, you're in a pit, and you just think you're lost. I want to say a prayer over you, because the hardest the most difficult battles are the biggest victories that you will ever have in your life this is the Holy Spirit speaking to you right now the hardest battles are the greatest victories 
You think you lost, that is a lie from the enemy. As long as you are breathing, there is still time to be all in. Buy into Jesus. Buy into the strength of God. And stand for something. Don't fall for any. Whoever that is, maybe you raise your hand or you stretch your hands to the screen. If you're at home, I just want to pray for you right now. If you would raise your hand, that's you. Come on. Yeah. Heavenly Father, I come to you right now for every person raising their hand. Lord, any person that feels like they've lost. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That you still bring a revival to dry bones. You still put flesh on some dry bones and you breathe into the Lord, breathe new life. Breathe new life. Breathe victory today. Breathe forgiveness today. Breathe hope today. Lord, breathe transformation today. Bring change in us, God. Breathe it today. Holy Spirit, that's what we want. We're all in. We speak victory over our lives and our faith today. If Jesus isn't your Lord and Savior, we pray this prayer every week. It's called the sinner's prayer where we come as sinners recognizing all our mess. and We lay everything at the line and Jesus turns us from a sinner to a saint. And we begin to walk with him and trust him. And Tate, if you don't have that relationship with Jesus, I want to lead you in that prayer. Whether you're at home or you're here. And you just simply repeat after me. Dear Jesus, I need victory. I need hope. I'm coming to you. I'm laying my life into your hands. I believe you died on the cross and shed your blood just for me. Today I leave a life of sin. Jesus, I believe you rose from the grave to give me new life and eternity. I commit my life to you. I've decided to be all in. I ask you to be my Lord and Savior. Today, Jesus, you are the leader of my life. Lord, thank you for new life. Today, you have mine. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Can we just celebrate with our friends who said yes to Jesus today? Come on. That's the greatest victory. That's the greatest victory. Well, hey, I want to go ahead and send you out with a blessing today. If this is your first time here, tell somebody about it and get them here. If you're not here today and you're watching, you're missing out. Can't wait till you make it, okay? Let me send you out with a blessing. Church, you are God's treasure possession. Your heavenly Father is proud of you. He watches over you, and he will take care of you. You have the Holy Spirit living inside of you, and he will help you. Because of Jesus Christ, you can be anything, and you can do anything. You are the hands and feet of Jesus in a lost and dying world. You are a difference maker. Nothing can take away God's greatness in your life. You are blessed. Amen. God bless you guys. Have a great Sunday.